you believe there is extraterrestrial life, head to our website, cnn.com slash Larry King, to vote. There's also a special guest commentary by Governor Symington about what he saw in the Arizona skies. It also had Shirley MacLaine. We'll be back with more right after this. Um, Copenhagen. Uh, Colonel Holt, uh, investigating the area days later, he's here with us now, Colonel Holt, ended up seeing something himself. Listen to this audio tape. There was no doubt about it. There's some type of strange flash of red light ahead. There's yellow. I saw a yellow tinge in it, too. Weird. It appears to be maybe moving a little bit this way. Yes, it's part of that house bed. Yellow. It's coming this way. It is definitely coming this way. Now we've got an object about 10 degrees directly south. 10 degrees off the horizon. And the ones in north are moving. One's moving away from us. They're moving out fast. There's one on the right side of the way, too. And we have with us, he brought it along, uh, Colonel Holt's notes that he kept while this was going on, right? Actually, it's Sergeant Penniston's notes. Yep. Your, your note. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, Chuck. Uh, it was Sergeant Penniston's notes. You kept these while you were viewing this thing. Yes, we needed the times and that for, you know, our log entries and stuff like that. Uh, it's routine. <laughs> yeah. you, missed, you, missed, you missed the symbols on that. The symbols are so fascinating. Routine activity is not a routine event. That's yeah. right. Let's check in with Nick Pope in uh, Copenhagen, 21 years, a government official for the British Ministry of Defense. Nick, what do you make of all of this? Well, the Rendlesham Forest case was certainly one of the most compelling uh, UFO incidents in the British government's files on this. And critically, one of the very important things about is that, um, I don't know if the Colonel has, has spoken about the radiation readings that were taken at the landing site. Well, the British government defence intelligence staff subsequently assessed those radiation readings as significantly higher than background levels. So there was a real tangible, solid piece of evidence to, to back up this, this uh, extraordinary testimony. Nick, does the British government take the same position as the United States government as if to say it doesn't exist? Well, the, the position is broadly similar, but having said that, the Ministry of Defence still does have a small UFO project, um, although investigations are, are somewhat uh, on the back burner. Uh, these days. But, um, you know, I, I think there are still cases being reported to the government. There are still, for example, uh, many reports coming in from pilots, uh, reports of UFOs being tracked on radar. And the Ministry of Defense says that it keeps an open mind about the UFO phenomenon. Uh, so Five, what do you believe? Do you believe there is life somewhere else? I, I would be uh, astonished. Uh, to find out if it were possible that we were alone in the universe. Do you I, think? I, I just, you know, we're this uh, wonderful planet in the Milky Way, surrounded by billions of, of um, objects, and uh, the universe is such a big place. Uh, I just think that um, I, you have to be open to that possibility. Isn't it also open to the possibility, James, that this is just phenomena? Well, yeah, they're definitely phenomena, but I mean, I think the people in a position to, to know what's really going on are about to disclose that uh, on November 12th at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., and, and hopefully you say people the government listen. is going to disclose something? The government officials from seven countries, military and government will officials. Will disclose on Monday? Yes, they will. Yeah, this, this is an unprecedented uh, gathering of, um, of top right. officials. Why now, Colonel Halt? I think there's greater acceptance now that there really is something there, despite the fact that there's kind of a stigma that goes with UFOs. you believe that too, Sergeant? <clears throat> They're ready to come across and say at least there's something? I think it's unavoidable right now. I think that there's been so much uh, cases and so many points made over the last uh, 20 years. I think uh, it's overwhelming. Nick, you think the British government is ready? Yes, I think so. I, I think part of the problem with all of this is the, the stigma that sometimes attached simply to the word UFO. And some colleagues and I at the Ministry of Defence actually tried to do away with that term and replace it with unidentified aerial phenomena because we were certainly convinced that there were some serious defence, national security and flight safety issues here, even though we didn't know what the UFO phenomenon actually was. What did this do to your head, Jim? 
Well, I tell you what, it's a very difficult situation, uh, and it had a terrible effect on uh, also the airmen that were out there with me. Um, some won't go on camera, some will not talk about today. Um, I think that uh, uh, it would uh, probably uh, cause a lot of... It, I, I had problems with, you know, uh, post-traumatic stress after it, that sure. type of thing. Psyche. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a very traumatic experience. We've got lots more to go. Our complete program tonight is devoted to unidentified flying objects. Uh, we'll interrupt our panel. We've been talking with military officials about UFOs. Coming up, we'll ask Shirley MacLaine what she thinks about these reports. That's next on Larry King Live. Did you see a UFO? Uh, I, I did. I don't really know what happened to it. I saw one, but I don't know what just disappeared. It's time to find out what, what the truth really is that's out there. That such an investigation be taken. Came to you eventually, and the police officer too. They're coming. Don't take this as war to worlds. Don't go panicking out into the streets. She's an old and dear friend and one of the more talented people in the, on the American scene. Shirley MacLaine, the Oscar-winning actress, author of a new book, Saging While Aging. All of her books are major bestsellers. There you see its cover. There's a lot in this book that we're not into tonight, but we're going to discuss one aspect of it, which is UFOs fitting our subject tonight. By the way, Shirley came up during a recent Democratic presidential debate in Philadelphia. Tim Russert is asking Representative Kucinich about McLean's book. Watch. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we had it. They lied to me again. Anyway, <laughs> uh, many people react with laughter when they hear people talk about UFOs. Mm. How do you explain that? I don't know. I think the unknown is uh, traumatizing to people. I think we do have a built-in DNA of fear. Uh, one of the reasons I'm so interested in all this, well, I'll tell you how I got interested in a minute if you want to know, but I think the, uh, the consciousness of how we relate to this phenomenon and the consciousness of change that happened to people who were taken aboard crafts, because I've talked to a lot of them. Like the sergeant said, he's never been He the was same. afraid. The, the whole idea of what induces fear is something they talk about a lot. It's, to me, I don't want to get into arguments, are they real or not, anymore. I've had too much experience talking to people all over the world, particularly in Peru, who uh, have satisfied me. But what... You, you believe in them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I think maybe... The problem with accepting it and the need to have a kind of curtain of humiliation drawn is that it, uh, it confounds us relating to our religion and our belief in God. But what I found with the people, and I worked a lot with Johnny Mack, head of psychiatry at Harvard, old friend of mine, wonderful man, and he said uh, that we have to get clear in our own heads, in our own consciousness, what God is. And do you think this sort of, to people, uh, tells us there is no God because there's the no opposite there. The opposite, because what they've told me is they're being taught two things. They're being taught that we are trashing the planet in a fierce way. Be careful. And then we're being taught that they too, even though they may be extremely superior in many technological ways, they're trying to teach us about the superiority of our technical spirit and knowledge that we haven't even touched. Why do you think, just think, they don't land in downtown Washington? Well, listen, I was 18 years old, Arlington, Virginia, where we lived. UFOs buzzed the Capitol and buzzed the White House on July 19th, 1952. I recorded it in my diary. No one knew what it was. The switchboards lit up. Everybody was confused. A few days later, Truman, who was president then, uh, had General Samford go on television. I have the kinescope, actually, and say, look, they're not ours and they're not Russian. We don't know what they are. Hmm. And you got the, the form there that Jimmy Carter filled out? Yeah, I found the actual one where he's got all of his uh, handwritten well, he saw notes. A sighting. 
Oh, sure. Well, you got a, the Vatican said something? Yes. Now, this is interesting in relation to the question and problem of religion and God. Padre Balducci, wonderful man, Monsignor Balducci, very close to each pope. He has come out with uh, a statement. You see how thick it is, so I can't read it. They're real. They have discussed what to do about it. Vatican intelligence would really like to discuss it. That's the problem here. We need the governments to reveal these files. The Chinese have done it. The Brazilians have done it. The French did it about a month ago, and it so lit up their switchboard, crashed their net. So I think the people are way ahead of uh, military well, intelligence. Well, what is the, since they're not attacking us and they've been seen for years, what's the fear? What's the government's fear? That's an interesting question. I've been working with Paul Hellyer. He's the minister, ex-minister of Defense Canada under uh, Trudeau. He is upset because the Americans are planning the weaponization of space as though they are enemies. Really? Yes. And it is very troubling to him. It came out of a project called Pro Project Paperclip in which, and this is what Eisenhower warned us against, the sustention of the military industrial complex. In order to extend the power and the funding of the military industrial complex, you have to be afraid of things. Number one was communism. If that petered out, number two is terrorism. That's here for a while. Number three is asteroids, and number four is extraterrestrials. So there might be a built-in reasoning here to have induced fear just to keep military industrial complex. You've going. talked to a lot of people over the years, right? Yeah. Astronauts, presidents, etc. Yeah. And your belief is firm, right? No question. It, uh, you think we'll ever know? Yes, and I think there will be sightings and I get the feeling and this is where consciousness comes in because all these guys who were talking about how they were afraid etc I've talked to so many who had these feelings it's all about feelings it's all about what goes on in the spirit of your head I think I think really the government in this country wants to release this information military intelligence does because I've I know some of them and I think they are watching what happens in terms of the public's reaction to this, this. conference Monday then is important. Yeah, I think yeah. it's important. Thanks, Cheryl. Okay. Shirley MacLaine and her new book, all of her books have been bestsellers. The new one is Saging While Aging. We'll be right back with our panel, but as we go to break, here is the aforementioned clip, uh, which we didn't have before, <laughs> of Dennis Kucinich in a recent debate explaining to Tim Russert his encounter with a UFO. They should ask Governor Richardson. He's the governor of that the godmother of your daughter, Shirley MacLaine, writes in her new book that you cited a UFO over her home in Washington State, that you found the encounter extremely moving, that it was a triangular craft, silent and hovering, that you felt a connection to your heart and heard directions in your mind. Now, did you see a UFO? Uh, I, I did, and uh, the rest of the account, oh, I, I didn't, I, it was unidentified flying object, okay? It's like, it's unidentified, I saw something. And he's looking on his radar and he sees this big mass of something coming toward his airplane. It, it goes from his nose to the right, to the back, and it, it moves in uh, nine or ten seconds, it goes from six, seven miles in front of them to six or seven, eight miles behind them, and then back over to the left. Welcome back. Our panel remains. Added to it is John Callahan, the former division chief of the Accidents and Investigation Branch of the FAA in Washington. He was sworn to secrecy about what we're going to tell you now. Uh, in uh, 19... 86, a Japanese pilot said he saw twin cylinders flying in formation within 500 feet of his air cargo jet. He claimed the object was the size of two aircraft carriers and it followed him for over 30 minutes. Anchorage air controllers registered a radar target. The U.S. Air Force controllers reported seeing a blip, but moments later it was gone. This, I imagine, will also be discussed at this big meeting on Monday. John Callahan, what did you make of this? Well, we went up to, uh, uh, when I got a call from Alaska about uh, what to tell the media that was overrunning their office 
Well, I asked him why.